deal, especially out in the staging lanes right now. This is lot 1549.2, a 1949 Diamond T201. See that T on the, the ornament right there? This is a very interesting truck. You know, there are only about 7,000 of these made. In the late 40s, if you wanted a serious pickup truck, this was really what you were going to buy. In fact, it's a one ton. It cost more than a, about a third more than a regular Ford pickup was going to cost you. It even cost you another $200 over what a Ford one ton was going to cost. Diamond T was really known for their commercial vehicles back in their day, but they also, between 36 and 1949, built the 201, which which became very popular, well, at least to the degree of having 7,000 of them made. Considered very sturdy, very strong, very solid pickup. Very rarely do we see them here at Barrett-Jackson, but this one's going to be up in the Austin block very shortly. And as with any collectible, there's even a diamond T registry for those who like this. <laughs> yep, there's a registry for just about any mark you can think of. That is some truck right there. Now here's a look at the results on our second Haverty Fantasy Bid vehicle, the 57 Thunderbird Convertible. Congratulations to the iPad winner. We'll give you a look at the daily point totals toward the 32-inch HD TV. Mad City Chick. We get a tie. We'll have two more vehicles to help break that tie. An award TV monitor. And the total points contest over three days and a total of 30 Haggerty Fantasy Bid vehicles right now is being led by WebWorker, but narrowly over Hooser Daddy 31. It'll go right down to the line, I'm sure. Three sets of great prizes. Now back to the block. Currently occupied by lot 1548.1, a 1929 Ford Custom Roadster, and we're at $41,000. You know, Bob, when you build customs and rods to your own taste, you're never sure if the person who's buying it is going to have the same taste as you. You build one that looks like this, classic body style, perennially popular color, you're always going to find a ready buyer. Small block Chevy, four-wheel discs, uh, digital dash, kind of a 1-800 street rod uh, sort of theme, but nicely done. You can get all fiberglass, as, as most of these tend to be. And why not? I mean, it's so much easier to work with than metal if you're going to be doing some customizing here. Sold for $42,000. That moves it to a tie for 10th place in our top sales of the day. These guys look like they're having a good time. Why not? Picked up a cool street rod. Imagine that fiberglass is also pretty easy maintenance. On now to another custom. This one, a 2007 Dodge Charger. This is wicked looking. This was done for the King of Cars reality show uh, on TV, and it's an interesting uh, white on black, flat black kind of theme. Uh, the wheels are said to evoke the Audi R8 style. I'm not sure if I see that, but what I do see are these big, 24-inch hoops that kind of make everything else on this car look small. One thing I'm loving about it is the uh, very subtly done two-door body conversion, of course. As we know, Chargers are nothing but four doors, which is very strange because the original Chargers were nothing but two doors. So this kind of corrects that, if you will. Under the hood, of course, 5.7 liters worth of modern Hemi, 345 horsepower. No real need to improve on that. There's plenty of power right there. Some folks say that's not a real Hemi. I say, no way. Open one up and have a peek. The only thing these don't have is the fully machined large combustion chamber that a Hemi does because all that extra area increases emissions. It's crevice volume is what they call it. So they squash the chamber down, but the valves are still kicked, so they open toward the center of the chamber. They're unshrouded, you got double rockers, your cross bolt of mains, you got plugs in the middle, it's a handy. Well, what impresses me here is what Mike brought up. How much work does it take to cut a four-door sedan apart and glue it back together as a hardtop two-door coupe? A lot. And the boys and girls at West Coast Customs do that kind of work all the time. This profile is beautiful. When Dodge reintroduced the Charger as a four-door, purists bemoaned it and said, why don't they do a two-door on this platform? Well, they did. They call it the Challenger. So Matt Stone, you know, with, with the Italian uh, merger, if you will, of, of Chrysler, there's a lot of rear-wheel drive Alfa Romeo and Fiat platforms. Do you suppose one of those might wind up under a future Challenger in a smaller package while this one sells for 40000 
I think it's all possible in fair game, Steve. That remains to be seen. Of course, the last time they did that, they did it with a car that was also known as the Plymouth Sapporo, and it was a Mitsubishi, and it was a failure in the marketplace. Yeah, that's something you don't see every day on the Mother's On Deck Cam 1945 Willis Military Jeep. Loaded for bear, it appears. Saw one of those or something similar, including the machine gun, inactive, of course, unable to fire bullets. Uh, early, perhaps day one here at Scottsdale. Here's another baby bird, this one a 55 convertible. Well, this one has been upgraded to 12 volts because standard, of course, it would have been a six volt car. Uh, and reason, a big reason for that, we can see there's a Sandin air conditioning unit. Uh, the compressor is here, the, uh, flow, the, the, the blower motor is under the dash. And six volts, trying to run like a, a blower for an air, for air conditioner, not going to work out too well. So the 12 volt conversion, a very good idea. Wearing its correct hard top without a porthole, no portholes in 55. So in case you're wondering, that is correct right there. Now this car was displayed and presented with a large photo file of its restoration for potential bidders to have a look at and see how much work was undergone on bringing this T-Bird back. This was a California car, and the restoration we showed you pictures of was done in 1999. So about 11 years of driving and enjoying on this car. Not original radio, but the original AM radio is in the trunk. So that's good for a future buyer who will have his choice. Number the 57 earlier that came to the provenance of expert restoration and a recent one went for $52,000. We are at 38 on this little beauty. I dig the 55. It's the sportiest of the three of them. Not a lot of trunk space in this one, and again, as we said, it's an older restoration, so it's starting to show a little bit of wear and tear, and that will hold. The number back a bit. There's that little fella again. Maybe this car will be in his future. I'm a great little guy. Just happy all the time. That's the way to have him. Now up to Rick DeBrule. Yeah, standing out here with lot 1553, it's a 1957 Chevrolet Nomad Custom Station Wagon. Remember earlier we showed you that 1956 Dodge Sierra. Well, think about it. This was the competition back in those days, and this was seriously outselling that Dodge. As I mentioned, Dodge back then was the eighth largest car company in terms of sales. Looking up the hood, nothing spectacular here. Check out those Offenhauser valve covers, though, right there. Got a nice, simple tri-carb setup. Nice look all the way down the line. I would say this has a great body. Kind of a fun paint job to it. Very simple, got a nice lines. You know, every weekend here they have a show at the pavilions where you can go with them at McDonald's. Everybody brings their car and has a great time. I would say this is a great driver car. This is one of those that would be great to come out to on the weekends, enjoy, have a good time, without seeing it too much money. Could you take it up to the next level? Yeah. Or you could just buy it and drive it. We'll come back to Scottsdale in a moment.